Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Combat Corner. Powered by Come On Now, the podcast. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shomat, and I'm talking UFC 305. That's right, 305, Dade County. Should look like this. I don't even know. Yeah, whatever. It's really supposed to be three. See, this is in reverse. It's 305. Anyhow, UFC 305 in Perth, Australia. Because Duplessis retained his belt with a fourth round rear naked choke submission of Israel Adesanya. I did pick Drikas Duplessis to win the fight via stoppage in round three. Um, the fight went pretty much, for the most part, how I expected it to. I was a little bit surprised by. Drickus backing up and not being as aggressive in round three, which kind of let Izzy back into the fight. I thought Drickus won the first two rounds rather clearly. He dropped out of Sanya in the first round, um, took him down at will in the second round. The fight should have been over in the second round. He took him down in the second round. He was physically dominating him, in my opinion. Second round, he has that. He has him where he could have been. He had him flattened out on his stomach. And then he goes in for the choke. I think he could have gone in for the choke, but he could have really reined in some ground and pound from behind, which potentially would have ended the fight or made the choke a little easier. But he went in a little too fast, in my opinion, and then lost the position. And then saw a little bit of a turn in the third round. Um, you know, Drinkus keeps his guard up way high, and Israel did a good job of, you know, keying in on the body. But Drickus Duplessis is got a rock for a head. And even when Adesanya is landing, you don't see him affected by it. Never really saw him affected by the shots. Didn't think he was. And in the fourth round, I thought Izzy won round three just in sheer volume. Because in terms of power, Drickus was landing the stronger shots. Even in round three, he started landing some shots towards the end of the end of the round that I thought were heavy, heavy shots. Round four, it's really about who was coming forward the entire fight. When the, the person who was initiating was winning. And Drickus cracks him with a left hook. And you know it hit him. It rocked him. <clears throat> but he responded. He cracked him with another left hook. And that rocked Izzy to the point where he kind of backed away, reset, and was like, come on. And then he kind of bicycle, tries to bicycle away, and Drickus catches him again from the bop, bop, takes him down, finishes. I mean, it was – Drickus Duplessis, for whatever people think, it doesn't look pretty. It looks awkward. It looks funky. But that dude is strong. That dude is tough. He's physical. And he hits hard as shit. And – at the end of the fight, they had their little kumbaya, hugging, kissing, loving each other. That's cute. You know, I get it. You're building up a fight. But they were really, really friendly after the fight. It makes you wonder if the whole thing was a shtick. Um, I don't think it was. I do think there was some dislike there. And I don't think they're going to have a beer together, nothing like that, or, or, or be friends or what have you. But Drinkus Duplessis is a respectful fighter. He, he respects Izzy. I mean, it's hard. It's impossible to not respect Izzy. You know, Israel is a, is, a, is a champion. He's a great, great fighter. Um, I think Sean Strickland respects Izzy a great deal. I think it's hard to not – these guys jump, go in a cage. I mean, you retain a belt for as long as you, you retained it. You're fighting consistently. Izzy was a great, great champion. But I think his time has passed. And I really thought he should have hung it up um, in the cage last night. I know he went Wolf of Wall Street. He says, I'm not fucking leaving. Like uh, Jordan Belfort, uh, you know Leonardo DiCaprio's character in, in Wolf of Wall Street, I I thought he probably should. I think he should hang it up. There's not much left for him to do. He's lost now three of four. He got his revenge on Pereira. What's the other only other option? He's not in line for a title shot. He's now lost back to back fights. So who is he going to fight now? Could he fight Apollo Costa? 
could he potentially fight Rob? Well, Robert Whitaker is now fighting Kamzat Chimaev, so that's out the window. I think Chimaev is the worst stylistic matchup for him with with the nonstop wrestling. Although I don't know how good Chimaev is, and I don't really, I, I don't truly know how good Chimaev is because I thought he lost to Gilbert Burns, and in a five round fight, I don't. I think Usman would have beaten him in a five round fight. So cardio wise, I thought Israel Adesanya looked good cardio wise. He looked like he was in shape. He looked like he had the gas. Drickus hits hard. That fucking dude hits like it comes from everywhere, but it it it, it, it cracks. He's a he cracks. Um overall, I, I saw the cards that came out. I two judges had a two-one Drickus. One had a 2-1 Izzy. Flabbergasting to me that in round one, I saw that Drickus lost on one on a couple on, on one of the cards. I don't know what the hell they're watching. Um let me pull it up real fast. I just don't know what the hell they're watching. Cause you had where is this card? You had one judge here that gave – two judges gave Izzy round one. What? Two judges gave Izzy round one. And one of those judges who gave Izzy round one gave Duplessis round three. Who – what? I'm saying his best round was round three. But I thought Drick has clearly won rounds one and two. Like, those were not close. To me, Drew Drick has won the first two rounds. Izzy won the third round. I cannot believe that the cards have Izzy winning round one on two of them and Drick is winning round three on one of them. The judging last night was absolutely fucking atrocious. Absolutely atrocious. The the judging, what was the card? It was the the two the, the tie tie to Ivasa Jarzino Rosenstrike fight. One judge gave Tui Vasa all three rounds. He won 30-27 on one card. And then Rosenstrike won 30-27 on the other. And Tui Vasa won, um, I mean, uh, Rosenstrike won 29-28 in the other. I had Rosenstrike winning every round. I picked Tui Vasa. I thought Rosenstrike dominated the fight. He won all three rounds. Clearly. Like, clearly. And that judge, who was Howie Booth, was immediately relieved after that fight. So I'm going to guess that he probably had more fights to, to judge. I don't know who was judging the Dan Hooker fight because that was a train wreck of a freaking decision, in my opinion, as well. Dan Hooker walks away with a, 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 deci- a decision win over, over Matosh, Matosh Gamrot. Oh, my God. I thought Matosh Gamrot won that fight, and I didn't think it was even a question that he won that fight. Was it a physical rock'em sock'em great fight? Yeah, it was. Well, Gamrat won. Gamrat won. Gamrat. They both dropped each other in round one, and it's like they forgot that Gamrat dropped him and then dominated him for like four minutes of round one. That card was crazy to me. That that judging card was crazy to me as well. I thought Gamrat clearly won that fight, but. He takes the L in Australia. But let's recap these fights real fast. You had your opener with um, Carlos Prates defeating Ling Jing Liang. Wow. I picked Jing Liang because I really hadn't seen Carlos Prates, to be honest. I'm not going to sit here and bullshit you. And I don't subscribe to this. Okay, he's a contender from, I think he was on the contender series. I could be wrong, but I don't subscribe to this. Okay, he looks great. He was on the contender series. and. Jing Liang gets like a tank. Prates is precise. Wow. Precise. Incredible performance. Precise. Finishes, finishes Jing Liang. Amazing performance by Carlos Prates. However, let's see how he does versus a wrestler. That's the question. This is 170. Let's see how he does against a wrestler. Because Jing Liang is not going for a takedown. And stood there, and he doesn't have the best head movement, and he took a lot of shots. And big time win for Carlos Prates. I don't know what's next for him, but probably someone in the top 15. 
Rosenstrike versus Tuivasa. I thought Rosenstrike dominated the fight, wins a split decision. Mind blowing to me. Again, I talked about Dan Hooker, Matush Gamrot. Hooker looked fantastic. Look, I'm gonna say I'm gonna, Hook, Hooker looked good. The, his toughness, his he looks like his cardio looked on point. Like he he really looked uh, in shape, which is big. He looked hella in shape. I thought Gamrot won. I thought he won. I know that there was a late. There's a late. It's like he stole rounds. Is what you the way I see. It. He stole rounds because the when when you look at the way he won the fight, I, I don't see how he. I don't see how you could watch that fight and say that he won that fight. I, I don't see it. But for some reason, the the scorecard is not coming up on UFC's website. It's got a X, so it's a busted graphic. <clears throat> okay, so Ben Cartledge gave round one to Hooker. Hooker won round one on two cards. I I can't understand how you gave how you could give him round one. That's my opinion. I thought he lost that round. I thought he was lost it for four minutes. You can't. You he la he landed some shots in the end of round one. He he did drop Gamrod as well, but Gamrod had already dropped him. Gamrod controlled the round. Uh, there are media members here. I mean, that I'll, that gave the fight to Hooker. I mean, you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Gave it to Gamrot. One, one CombatPress.com gave it thirty twenty-seven Hooker. Like I can't take that seriously. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you actually had nine for Gamrot and seven and eight for Hooker um, for media scores. I had a 29-28 Gamera. I thought he won round one's one rounds one and three. Um, yeah, the, look at these judges. They all gave they all gave uh Hooker round three. Am I crazy? A am I crazy? I, I mean, maybe I I'd love to hear in the comments. Am I crazy? Did you did I see something that you that other people didn't see? All three judges gave round three to Hooker around that Gamera clearly controlled until the final 60 seconds. That's bad judging. That's flat out bad judging that you can sit here and tell me that he won that fight based on the final 60 seconds when he was getting actually pieced up on the feet for four minutes of round. Um, for four minutes of round. Did, did my internet just drop for a second? Oh, I don't know. Um, let me know your thoughts. I'd love to hear it. And then, of course, you have the co-main event, which was Kai Car France versus Steve Ersic. Ersic was winning the first round. And then Kai Car France landed a bomb and finished the fight. I picked our sick. Like I said, I picked the first four that I was over four. And then I got them all wrong. I, don't listen to me for picks, man. Don't listen. To, don't use, don't bet on, don't bet on fights with my picks. Cause I thought that Tuivasa would ride the wave of the crowd and he looked awful. Um, Hooker did ride the, ride the wave of the crowd, but you even see in the Tuivasa fight, one judge giving three rounds to Tuivasa. These judges were bad. I can't I can't listen to these scores when the judging is so bad. So I thought Gamera won. I thought he got screwed. There was a fight earlier on the card um between it was between it was Kula Kula Ricardo Ramos versus Joshua Kulaba. Kulaba got screwed. Kulaba got screwed also. I don't know how this man didn't get the decision. And he was the Australian. That's the weird thing. The Australian in that one got completely screwed because Ramos, Ramos got some, some position in the last 60 seconds of a round he was losing, like clearly losing, and did nothing with the position. Didn't land any strikes, just basically held position. Awful, awful decision. Josh Kulabau got screwed. And the media picked it pretty much mostly for Kulabau. Now, I think Kulabau also blew opportunities to finish that fight. In round two, he had dropped Hamos with a kick. 
And Ramos couldn't walk at that moment. And yet he's kind of hovered over him and didn't let him get up. Right there. Let that motherfucker get up. Kick him in the leg again. Let him get up and knock his legs off again. Why are you hovering his ass? That's stupid. He let his ass get back up. He wants you on the ground, dumbass. Like sometimes fighters, the fighter IQ is just not there. The fighter IQ isn't there. Because there's no way in the world that you're going to sit here and tell me that that made sense for him to hover over Hamos and just try, try to kick him in the butt and kick him in the thigh and all that shit. Let him get up. He's on the ground because of a leg kick. Made no sense at all. That was another bad, bad decision. I mean, you got Kulabao gets rounds two and three, which is what I gave him. Mark Christie gives him round. I don't get it, man. I don't get it. These say don't leave it to the judges, but that's just brutal because when you look at if you look at uh, uh let's see here. I always give my scores as well on this MMA decisions website and a lot of people. Let's see how people what people think. So actually 58% have Gamrot winning over Hooker to 40.6% Hooker. There's a small percentage that had a draw. In fact, if, if you look, people picked Hooker to win round three. Man, I'm, I'm, of people, this is out of 572 scorecards submitted. Gamera was picked to win round two, 60.8% of the of the round of the people, 78% on round one. Hooker 81% round three. That's crazy. That's crazy. I don't agree with that at all. I don't agree with that at all. Yeah, that one, nah. I don't get down with that one at all. Nope. Can't do it. Can't do it. That said, um, what's next? What's next for uh, for Drickus Duplessis? Drickus Duplessis now has a rematch that will happen with Sean Strickland because that's what was announced. But you never know with the UFC. I would like to see that rematch happen. I thought Strickland won the first fight with those two. But Alex Pereira, Pereira, he posts on social that he wants to come down to 85 and fight Drickus. Pereira has a fight scheduled already against Khalil Roundtree, which will probably take him two or three minutes to, to, to end in October. And he wants to come back down. I Drinkins kind of did this little thing in the post fight press conference saying, Well, well, you know, he, I felt Izzy's power, and he knocked Pereira out starch cold, which he did. Kind of a baiting thing going on there. I don't know how real, like, you don't want him to come down to fight you. I, I, why wouldn't you? I think the reality is all these guys, there's been a, a culture that all these guys want two championships. They want to be considered amongst those double, double champions, those double champs. And in a sense, it gets a little bit, it's just a little bit, it's a bit much because you haven't cleaned out the division. There's guys to fight. Yeah, you did beat Strickland. It was a contested fight. You still haven't fought Shemaev if he ever gets there. There's guys to fight. You can't just become champion and say, I want to go fight at 205. And, yes, yeah, Stricker says he, he fought him at 205. I think that would be a very bad decision on his part because Pardee doesn't going to walk in at 235 in that fight. Um, But overall, that would be something if Pereira comes back down to fight at 85. I think Izzy's only option is to jump up to 205, but I think we also saw that he really can't fight 205ers really all that effectively. They're too big. They're too big for him. You think that Izzy would beat Pereira at 205? Hell no, because Pereira's going to walk in at 235, and Izzy will still be 205. Izzy's not going to be a uh, – Izzy will be a slow version of him. He he looked slower. I will say this. He looked a little slower. He didn't look – he's 35 years old, man. He's getting a little older. He fought a lot. But I'd like to – I mean, if Izzy's going to stick around, I think the best thing is to bump up to 205 because at 185, what's there? What's there? He's not going to get a rematch with Duplessis. It's not going to happen. Not without at least two or three wins. Over someone. Does he want to fight those lesser guys like ranked fifth, fourth, 
third, fourth, fifth, sixth. Did you want to fight Vittori again? Brandon, I mean Brandon Allen and Vitt Marvin Vittori are probably gonna have a fight now because they just had, they got into a fist fight at the at the PFL event at the Hard Rock this past Friday. I just don't know what's next for Izzy. I, I thought he would retire. I thought he would retire. But oh, I want to jump on one last thing. There's a fight with Tafa. Uh, junior was a junior. It's Junior Tafa, who felt the need to slap Volker. Um, what the hell is uh, Johnny Walker's brother, Walter Va Va Walter Walker, and he slaps him at, at the end of the fight. After the fight, I don't really know why you got submitted. You screamed out in pain twice on a on a on a, it was like a knee bar or ankle lock or whatever. Screamed out in face. That's a verbal submission, bro. You lost the verbal submission. They always tell the fighters before the fight if you scream. That's a submission. That's it. You scream out in pain, you lost the fight. So what the fuck are we talking about here? You're slapping someone after the fight because you lost? And now, um, yeah, it was Junior Taffa. Now uh, Walker wants to fight Justin Taffa. Let's see. Let's see what happens. <laughs> but overall, I enjoyed the card a great deal. I, I thought it was a good – I thought they were good fights. Very, uh, very impressed with Drinkus Duplessis. Tremendously impressed by Kai Kara France with his win. And then, of course, the, the fight with Hooker and Gamrot. I thought that was a fabulous. And it was exciting. These guys throw down. But I thought Gamrot got screwed. You know, you can still have a great fight and, and cl clearly think someone won. Uh, you know, and yeah, I thought Gamrot won. So. We'll see what's next for Gamera because now I think you're going to see Hooker jump into the top six. Might we see another Dan Hooker, Michael Chandler fight? I'd like to see that fight. Chandler needs to fight somebody. Chandler, fight someone to retire because you waiting two years for Connor. Fight somebody, please. Please. Hooker's the guy to fight because you knocked him out once. Fight him again. Let's go. That's all I got for today. What are your thoughts on that Drinkus Duplessis Israel Asanya fight, the entire card? I picked Drinkus. I got I went one and four, baby. One and four. Let's go. Combat corner in the house. Be sure to like, subscribe, and follow. Ring that bell. Thank you for joining me. Have a good one.